Hello, welcome, and thank you for watching this presentation for the paper entitled Real-Time Demonstration of AWR Frontal for High Bandwidth Millimeter Wave 5G NR Signal Transmission over Multicore Fiber. My name is Simon Rommel, and I come from Eindhoven University of Technology. Before I start this presentation, I would like to acknowledge all my co-authors. I would also like to acknowledge the 5G PPP project Blue Space, within which this work was performed. As you well know, the requirements and KPIs for 5G networks foresee reduced latency and massive capacity increases, with uh, peak data rates beyond 10 gigabits per second, a 10,000 times increase in area traffic density, and 100 times more devices connected concurrently. Now, especially in order to support those peak data rates, millimeter waves will become uh, mandatory, and larger bandwidth and MIMO or beamforming are required. This in turn puts a huge strain on front and backhaul where the functional split will determine the specific requirements, but for all but the most high level splits, optics becomes practically mandatory for front haul, and analog front haul becomes a viable alternative as it uh, allows to maintain the centralization of the uh, radio network. Now in terms of the front haul design directions, it is clear that the current CIPRI is limited by the required uh, data rates and cannot scale to um, large bandwidth uh, combined with large uh, MIMO implementations. Now, a lot of discussion uh, has been going on about uh, moving towards new SIP reforms and new forms of digitized uh, front hall, where uh, some of the phi processing complexity is carried back to the uh, remote unit, as you can see here on the top uh, parts of the slide. Of course, that comes at the cost of increased uh, RU complexity and reduces the centralization of the network. Now, in Blue Space, we propose to move the other way to go towards analog front hall to also take the um, digital to analog conversion, which uh, for SIPRI still happened at the remote site, uh, also into the central office and really minimize the remote unit to a fully analog uh, station that only converts from optics to radio, amplifies and transmits. In order to do that, of course, we need to uh, revolutionize the front hall with analog rough uh, signals. And um, the added benefit that we get is that it uh, directly combines uh, ideally with optical beamforming. Only shortly to remind ourselves of the principles of analog radio fiber and the connection to optical beamforming. The idea behind analog radio fiber is to use an optical heterodyne process to directly generate millimeter wave signals using optics, which allows us to maintain all processing and complexity at a central office and uh, takes advantage of the fact that uh, the involved bandwidth both for the RF carrier as well as the data signal itself are considered low for this easily available uh, in optics. Now the beginning of the process is to start with a two-tone generation either with a single laser and a maxender that uh, splits this tone into two and suppresses the central carrier or directly uh, using two lasers uh, locked in a phase locked loop in order to generate those uh, two tones that are spaced by uh, the target frequency so that their heterodyning later on would actually produce the target uh, radio signal. Now modulating one of these uh, tones with the data signals and leaving the other one as a co-propagating uh, constant wave uh, tone allows us to have a signal that can easily be transported over the fiber and if put onto a photodiode, which is basically a square law detector, we know that we get all the mixing products of those two uh, signals, which means we get the, both a baseband copy, which we discard, as well as our target RF copy. So we have actually managed to translate the normal process of up conversion that would normally happen in uh, the radio domain into a process that happens in the optical domain, where we have two separate steps. The first one splitting the, the laser into the two-tone uh, signal, and then modulating it with the baseband or intermediate frequency radio signals, which then are transported over fiber and after the um, heterodyning on the photodiode, produce the target RF signal uh, directly carrying the modulation that we have previously introduced, um, the desired modulation. Now the relation to optical beamforming here is uh, very clear. Beamforming as such requires a differential phase shift uh, between the signal copies uh, destined for the uh, separate antenna elements. So beamforming uh, here assuming a linear array of uh, a linear antenna array. Mm -hmm. Now this can of course be achieved in, in electronics and optics and typically the way it's done in electronics is shown here in the graphic where you have a transmit signal that gets split over uh, as many copies as are needed in order to feed all the antenna elements. And then a bank of phase shift is actually introduces uh, these differential phase shifts in order to uh, offset the direction of the beam. 
Now in optics, this can be performed in this way, but um, in optics, we have the ability to not only implement the bank of phase shifter, but actually implement a full uh, beamforming matrix, so-called blast matrix, which um, allows direct multi-beam transmission. So here on the left-hand side, we see we have one input signal that uh, gets split over all the different antenna elements. In optics, what we can do if we implement a full blast matrix, we have a number of input signals that all get routed to all output signals with uh, adjustable differential outputs for each signal, input signal towards each of the antenna output signals. So we can concurrently um, transmit multiple beams from the same antenna array, and we believe that uh, brings a number of, of advantages in that we need a smaller number of RF transmit chains, and therefore, of course, we have uh, reduced power consumption. Now, taking this concept and translating it into a basic uh, architecture, you can see the AROF frontal architecture uh, here on this slide. In the downlink direction, we start with our AROF uh, baseband unit, which generates a baseband IQ 5G new radio signals. Um, those get fed uh, into our IF unit, which upconverts it to an IF uh, frequency, which then is the data signal that gets fed into our AROF transmitter, which takes care of the two-tone generation and um, the modulation with the data signal so that it can be transported over the multico fiber to the remote unit where it is uh, in the air of uh, receiver put on a photodiode. Uh, therefore, we have the heterodyning process. We get our target uh, millimeter wave signal. The uh, millimeter wave signal is amplified in the RF front end and we have the antenna array that radiates the entire thing to the end user. Now, as an added benefit from the two-tone generation, we can take an unmodulated copy of the two-tone signal and actually provide it to our remote unit as a remote fed local oscillator, which we can then use directly for a down conversion for the signal uh, received from the end user. As you can see here, the millimeter wave signal coming from the end user is down converted with the help of the um, remote fed allowed to the IF frequency and then is transported again as an analog radio fiber signal, but in this case only with uh, IF over fiber transport to the central office where it gets fed back directly into the IF unit. And of course, after down conversion to baseband, gets processed by the uh, AROF BBU. The basic AROF architecture shown in the previous slide was what was implemented in this work and what shall be discussed in the following slides. However, before doing so, I would like to mention that this is, of course, only the first step towards the full blue space architecture with optical beam forming employed both in up and downlink uh, direction. As you can see here, in both directions, we support uh, M beams, which are transported as individual AROF signals over the multi-core fiber, and then get mapped by the OBFN to or from the N uh, antenna elements. Back to the demonstration performed in this work and the AROF frontal setup that we implemented. We start with our blue space uh, AROF BBU and our IF unit. In the BBU, an FPGA takes care of the real-time processing of the extended 5G and R signals with 4096 subcarriers and a subcarrier spacing of 240 kilohertz. With the included DAX and ADCs, um, the BBU produces and receives separate I and Q uh, baseband signals of 400 megahertz width. The IF unit modulates those uh, signals onto a tunable IF between 2.25 and 5.5 gigahertz, carrying then a total modulated bandwidth of uh, 800 megahertz. The AROF transmitter is based on the suppressed carrier Maxenda modulator two-tone generation uh, scheme that in our case is driven with a radio local oscillator of 10.25 gigahertz and uh, due to the suppressed carrier this results in a spacing of the two tones of 20.5 gigahertz. Now we split the, this two-tone signal into a data path and a local oscillator path, where in the data path, of course, we introduce the signal coming from the IF unit in the second Maxender. Both signals are transported over two separate cores of the seven core fiber, which is designed to have uh, uncoupled cores behaving very much like a standard single mode fiber. The entire assembly of uh, 10 kilometer seven core multicore fiber and uh, fan in and fan out uh, devices has a total insertion loss of smaller uh, 5 dB. 
Now the point here is that in order to transport uh, this local oscillator and uh, a rough signal, they are the same wavelength. So we cannot uh, transport them over sing standard single mode fiber, but we have to use a separate cores of the multi-core fiber. At the remote side, our implementation follows the architecture. However, we have simplified it and do not implement the end user. That means we perform a wireless loopback at the remote unit uh, and we do not use uh, the fiber again for the return uh, transport, but directly link the received signal into the IF unit. Now, as you can see at the remote unit, we have a photodiode receiving the AROF signal uh, and feeding a power amplifier after which the signal is directly radiated with a pair of horn antennas over a nine meter of uh, wireless distance at the resulting frequency um, of 25.5 gigahertz, which is the sum of two times the LO frequency plus the IF frequency, of course. The received uh, millimeter wave signal is amplified with a low noise amplifier and down converted to the IF using the remote uh, fed local oscillator that you can see uh, transported also from the central office. The received signal is fed into the uh, IF unit, down converted to baseband, and of course uh, processed and uh, analyzed for a bit error rate by the uh, BBU. The performance of the system uh, you can see here. Uh, on the left hand side, we can see some uh, RF spectra. The first one you see is the transmitted RF spectrum, where you will notice that the signal is uh, very clean. However, you can see a component at uh, around 20.5 uh, gigahertz. This is in fact uh, a component that stems from uh, two times the LO frequency, meaning from the beating of the two uh, tones. And of course we get a similar tone at three times uh, that frequency and those uh, require additional uh, filtering, of course, if this were to be implemented as a real system. Now there are additional signal components, uh, especially the one at uh, two times the LO minus the FIF, so in our case at around 15 gigahertz, that would also have to be uh, filtered away. However, this filtering is relatively easy to do since as you can see, all the signals are spaced by um, at least the IF frequency by, so by at least uh, five gigahertz. You can also see here the uh, transmitted and received uh, IF uh, spectra. And you can see that the received uh, IF spectrum is somewhat degraded, it has a certain slope it appears that the higher frequencies are somewhat more uh, attenuated than the lower frequencies. We attribute that to some non-flatness in the frequency response, especially of the um, RF uh, amplifiers. You can also see that the uh, signal to noise ratio on the received IF spectrum is uh, severely degraded. Uh, this is mainly due to the noise, of course, in the signal, but by the slope of what you see here, we also believe that there's a small amount of saturation most likely in the uh, receiver LNA, the electrical NLA, LNA. Um, here we were limited by the distance that we could actually achieve in the lab. It might have been better to actually go over a slightly larger um, RF distance. On the right hand side, you can see the phase noise performance of the signal. This is very important. Phase noise is, of course, a very major concern in radio signals, especially with uh, OFDM modulation. And uh, in AROF signals, phase noise is often critical, um, especially when the um, two-tone signal is not generated in the scheme. We did in our case, of course, as you can see, phase noise is determined almost entirely by the RF local oscillator plus the um, IF local oscillator. And you can see that the um, RF signal has a phase noise level of around minus 85 dB uh, C per hertz at roughly one kilohertz offset, and then of course uh, falls off towards higher frequencies. You can see here that the phase noise floor at larger offsets appears to be higher for this RF signal. That is entirely due to the um, signal power that was available and the noise floor of the uh, measurement system. So if more power had been available, you could expect this to uh, decay at a similar rate as the uh, blue curve here in the slide. Then for the actual transmission performance in terms of uh, bit error rate, you can see here the bit error rate performance versus the optical uh, two-tone power. Now it may appear initially a little bit uh, confusing to measure this uh, independency of the two-tone power, which as you will remember, is actually at the central office. However, for this setup where also the uh, remote fed local oscillator is used for a down conversion of the same signal, 
it's actually key to remember that uh, 1 dB in this uh, optical power uh, actually uh, results in around 5 dB uh, receiver IF power variation. And this is of course because um, we have the optical heterodyning process happening twice, uh, where in each case, once for the RF power of the signal and the other time for the uh, power of the local oscillator used for down conversion, 1 dB of optical power directly corresponds to uh, 2 dB of RF power. Now the reduced power of the local oscillator further makes the uh, down mixing process somewhat less um, efficient. We uh, estimate that the reduced uh, local oscillator power and reduced efficiency causes a roughly 3 dB extra down conversion loss. And therefore we actually do have a 5 dB uh, difference in received IF power uh, for 1 dB difference of uh, optical power. Of course, the entire um, power can be scaled throughout the system. Um, we do have the information uh, also for the transmitted RF power here, which at the maximum optical power actually corresponds to a transmitted RF power after the PA of around 7.5 dBm. Now, if you look at the bit error rate, you can see that the bit error rate uh, is well below the uh, limit for a 7% uh, overhead hard decision forward error correction uh, code. You can see here that this stays true for at least one, almost one and a half dB of um, power margin. What we achieve here then is a 1.4 gigabit per second uh, transmission over this uh, AROF front hall system with full real-time processing of the 800 megahertz wide uh, extended 5G and R signal. On the bottom of the slide, you can also see the constellation for the uh, highest received power. As you can see, the constellations are relatively clean. There are a few outliers. And uh, in order to allow easier visualization here, we have split the 800 megahertz wide signal equally into eight uh, groups. This is only for visualization. Of course, um, in processing, they're uh, processed as one single 5G and R signal. With that, uh, I believe I can come to my uh, conclusions. Um, the first conclusion, of course, is that AROF front hall can solve the capacity issues that will be faced by front hall uh, for 5G systems. Um, the demonstration that we have shown, I believe, is one of the first with full real-time processing of an AROF uh, signal with 5G and R uh, modulation. Um, we have based this on our FPGA and our Blue Space uh, BBU. We have an IF unit for up and down conversion to a tunable IF, and the key here is that with the tuning range of the IF, actually we can cover the entire N258 band with a single um, LO used for two-tone generation. So we have opted to keep the two-tone generation fixed and have the uh, IF frequency uh, tunable. Now we have used the uh, multiple fiber transport for transporting the signal and the remote fed LO to the uh, remote unit. And we have achieved, as I said, 1.4 gigabit per second uh, transport with nine meter wireless at 25.5 uh, gigahertz. Again, this setup is only the first step towards the full uh, blue space architecture. And it's important to remember that this architecture includes optical beam forming, which we believe is the optimum combination uh, with AROF. Um, obviously, in this system, you will see that uh, capacity and signal quality have certain limitations which we believe need to be overcome and which we also believe we can overcome. Um, that first goes towards uh, improving SNR to allow higher order modulation on the OFDM subcarriers in order to uh, improve spectral efficiency. And we may have to reconsider for such systems whether OFDM is actually an ideal choice for a combined optical and radio channel. And here I would like to point to the work of one of my colleagues, which you can see uh, in the session uh, Phi 2, or you can just look at the presentation uh, directly, of course. Finally, I would like to leave you with a one slide overview of Blue Space, where in the next few months we plan to show the entire concept with a fully centralized run with space division multiplexing in the multicore fiber with shared analog and digitized radio fiber transport over the same network with a converged radio access network and a passive optical network for direct access with a software defined networking and network function virtualization platform implemented specifically for the scenario and with optical beam forming implemented for millimeter wave area of uh, transport. With that, I would like to thank you for watching, and I look forward to receiving your question in the chat feature of EUCNC 2020. 
If you'd like to have more information on the Blue Space Project, please check out our website, our leaflet, or our concept paper, or follow us on Twitter. You can find myself personally on any of the information listed on the bottom right of the slide, and you can also contact me by email. Thank you.